Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel. I've got awesome news here, more developments. This is from Ripple, Ripple themselves, and part of their Insight series. And this piece is titled, Ripple supports SinPay in opening new remittance markets to stay ahead of the competition. So I'm going to be covering this today. Uh, I've also got a piece that I'll cover after this titled, well, it doesn't matter what the title is, but it's about a petition for clemency for the creator of Silk Road, who's pretty much going to be in prison his whole life. And a lot of people think that the judgment against him is unfair, so I'm going to cover it, and you can let me know what you think if you care to do so. But before we get going here, if you would, please delicately tap that like button. And if you're a fan of Ripple and XRP, go ahead and subscribe to the Moon Lambo channel. It's a pretty good idea. All right, so let's hop into this, and I got to tell you at the outset here, um, there's no word specifically in this piece as to whether, uh, regarding this partnership, uh, if if X Current or uh, and uh, and or uh, X Rapid is being used, so we don't know that XRP is being used today. But I love this type of news because we're seeing real development with real corridors, with real payment flows, and so. Um, I'm going to read a little bit of this, and I'll t share with you some of my thoughts on it. As an exclusively online service, SinPay is able to provide its customers with some of the most competitive rates on cross-border money transfers. The London-based company even gives customers the option to waive fees with its pay-what-you-want service. To extend this extraordinary initiative even further and help millions of people get more when sending their money abroad, SinPay recently joined RippleNet, opening up new corridors to Bangladesh, Malaysia, Philippines, Vietnam, and Indonesia, and enabling real-time payment rails to Thailand. Most of our customers are migrants who are sending money back home, explained Bavin Vakela, SinPay's head of product innovation. This money is vital to support their families, to pay rent or mortgage, electricity bills, medical fees, and education costs. Being an online service allows us to reduce our overheads and pass the savings on to these clients for, whoever, for whom uh, every penny counts. Sinpay is popular in countries with established and growing migrant communities, including the UK and Europe, as well as Canada, uh, South Africa, and India. Other customers include students needing to pay tuition fees and receive funds to cover living costs, as well as small online businesses who buy and sell goods from other countries. And so I'm going to make an assumption here. If I, if I had to guess, if I, it's, it's just speculative, but if I had to guess, I, I'd be willing to bet that this has probably uh, more so to do with X current than X rapid, at least currently. And if, if, even if even for businesses that want to use X Rapid, the whole ecosystem is so young that there there's not there aren't a, like a crazy amount of uh, of corridors out there in which you can utilize X Rapid. So even if there's all sorts of businesses the world over that are aware of this and want to use it, uh, depending on where you're conducting most of your business, you you may or may not be able to. But the cool thing is with with X Current, you know that's uh, that's a lot closer to being turnkey, if you will. Because uh, the reason being, it doesn't have to do with settlement. X current, our X current doesn't specifically have to have anything to do with X current, and so it's just a messaging system for payments. But uh, it's like a, I'll call it a a good version of Swift, essentially, if you will. That's an oversimplification. But if you consider X wrap and what the implementation there would look like, you need pools of liquidity in each individual uh, country. So essentially, if you're going to re uh, rely on exchanges to be those pools of liquidity, which is fine. I'm sure there'll be other market makers in the future that are, are going to be pools of liquidity. But if you just consider the, the current exchanges, who are they? You know, there's Coins.ph in the Philippines. There's Bitso in Mexico and Bitrix in the United States. Well, the reason that you can conduct X Rapid transactions is because those pools of liquidity exist, and because they're they're utilizing X Rapid uh, to facilitate those transactions. So, if you're in a country that doesn't have an X Rapid enabled exchange, and, and there's no additional liquidity, uh, that makes things a little bit tougher, doesn't it? Yes. So that that's why that's in part why this is all going to take a lot of time to develop. But that's okay because every new customer that's utilizing X Current is a potential X Rapid customer, and when, when the timing aligns with the uh, with the opportunity, you're going to see a lot of business entities jump on board and begin using XRP in uh, as a, a settlement. You'll see it in payment flows. Anyway, and the piece continues here. 
All SendBay customers are concerned with maximizing the value of their cross-border transfers, which is why the company's low costs and wholesale effects rates stand out. What makes SendPay truly unique is the company's pay what you want feature that allows customers to waive fees on transfers totaling around $2,500 over a calendar year. This ensures that the full extent of a customer's hard work is appreciated by their families. The pay what you want feature also extends to businesses who can waive fees on transfers totaling around $5,000 per calendar year. Our suggested fees start at GBP350, which is already low for a cross-border payment, said Vegela. Though it is, it may not seem like much, when you translate that into a currency like Vietnamese dong, it's a significant amount of money. Our customers can choose to pay our suggested fee or change it to one they feel is fair. I think of our fees as similar to providing a tip, he added. If you feel like you've been treated well, received a good rate, and enjoyed the experience, you might pay the recommended rate. We've even had clients pay us more. And that's a fascinating concept. Uh, seems really gutsy, but hey, if it's working out for them, then hey, go for it. <laughs> right? Uh, while flexible fees attract new customers, the difficulty involved in transferring anything other than U.S. dollars to these countries was a significant barrier for Sinbay. Dealing in smaller currencies required direct partnerships with local banks and the setup and maintenance of complex API arrangements for each one. Using RippleNet to connect with a robust network of partners has proven to be a simple solution to this problem. Previously, we had to create a whole business case for each partner, said Vegela. RippleNet reduces that complication and friction. There's a built-in trust factor which allows us to get to market quicker. We were unable to offer currencies like Malaysian, Ringgit, or Bangladeshi Taka before. Now that it's easier to connect with local partners, we can provide our clients with more local currencies and, therefore, see net growth in those corridors. Even when Sinpay did have an established local partner, the transactions took days to complete. With RippleNet, previously lengthy cross-border payments are happening in real time. Here's a quote. We, when we sent Thaibot and it took three to four days for payment to be processed, recalled Vigela, thanks to RippleNet, a customer in Germany can log onto our platform at 3 a.m. on a Sunday morning and the money will be in the beneficiary's account in Thailand within an hour. More than 90% of our recent payments to Thailand over RippleNet have been delivered within 10 minutes. Uh, Sinpay also uh, Sinpay plans to continue opening new corridors and enabling more migrant workers, students, and small businesses to transfer money inexpensively and efficiently. The company has also just launched services into Africa, including high-value remittance markets like Nigeria, Ghana, Kenya, and South Africa. And that's why, you know, as, as, the, as more business entities join, uh, join RippleNet, it's, it's just that network effect. It's going to keep, keep compounding, and the network becomes more and more valuable for new potential customers, and then more and more and more. And uh, man, network effects are powerful, seriously. And that's the direction that we're heading. It's impressive how many customers Ripple is landing on a regular basis. Now here's a quote. As traveling to and, um, and working in other countries has become easier, people are also increasingly more comfortable with transferring uh, money digitally, concludes Vegela. The rapid growth of the online payments market demonstrates this. It's now a highly competitive sector with a growing number of new entrants. By helping us continually open up new markets, keep our fees low, and reduce processing times, Ripple ensures SinPay remains ahead of the competition. Indeed. Awesome news, guys. I love hearing this stuff. All right, here's a tweet from XRP Research Center, and I like this. Uh, XRP Ecosystem Update, edition since December 9th, 2018. We've got X Rapid Production Agreements, um, A, JNFX, B, Euro XM Bank, C, FTCS, D, Transpago, and then two, Spring Investments, and you got XRPL Labs, Raised in Space, Dharma Protocol, and then you've got RippleNet Integrators, UST Global, and at I underscore GTB, and then for Mojo Loop. And I haven't really talked about this too much on the channel. Maybe I should get more into that. Um, I don't. I can't remember if I've even covered it once or twice before. Anyway, and so they got that listed. But um, I, I, the reason I, I just covered this quick treat, tweet just for the fun of it, it's um, it's in the context of what I just shared with you with Ripple's piece, which is 
the ecosystem is growing. Things are happening. And I believe, not financial advice, but I think that this will bode well for the long-term price of, of XRP. And I, I think it will contribute substantially to its staying power. XRP ain't going nowhere. All right, here's a piece from Bitcoinist. Petition for clemency for Silk Road founder Ross Albrecht nears 200,000 signatures. And so that's him if you're looking at the screen. There's a picture of him right there. And uh, here we go. Silk Road founder Ross Albrecht has spent six years in prison and has 34 years and two life sentences to go unless a petition spearheaded by his mother and sister lead to a grant of clemency. And I don't even know, know if I need to explain what Silk Road was. Uh, I guess real quickly, just in case somebody doesn't know, it's just it's so well known within the crypto space at this point. But uh, it was just uh, there's, there's a website in which uh, all sorts of illegal things were uh, were sold. And uh, Bitcoin was also used, and so it got shut down. And it looks like the legal system really made, uh, really kind of wanted to like uh, make it uh, make him a poster boy for what not to do, essentially. So anyway, a petition seeking clemency for Silk Road founder Ross Albrecht is quickly approaching two hundred thousand signatures. Albrecht is currently serving a forty-year sentence on top of a double life sentence for his role as the leader of the defunct black market website. Albrecht is only six years into his sentence, and his mother, Lynn Albrecht, recently attended a blockchain conference in Toronto to advocate for her son. Miss Albrecht is hopeful that if she collects enough signatures, President Donald Trump will grant her son clemency. The online petition currently has more than 195,000 signatures, including those of Litecoin creator Charlie Lee, Roger Ver, and billionaire Bitcoin bull Tim Draper. A number of politicians and movie stars have also expressed their support for Ross Albrecht. According to Miss Albrecht, Ross is a good person, an idealist, and a libertarian. She said, I didn't think of him as someone who was interested in technology per se, but he was interested in Bitcoin because he was a freedom guy. He worked on the Ron Paul presidential campaign. He was very interested in Bitcoin as a means to monetary freedom for people. Indeed. Uh, both Miss Albrecht and Ross's sister, Callie, are placing their hopes in the change.org petition, and nothing would make them happier than to have Ross home for his 36th birthday. Uh, Ross also appears to be wishing for the same outcome, and a recent tweet of a handwritten note expresses his desire to turn 36 in freedom, and you can see it here. It says, well, I'm turning 35 in prison today. Doesn't feel too good. Feels like a big chunk of my life went missing. God willing, I'll turn 36 in freedom. And so, man, they really, it does seem to me that they really made an example of this guy. But uh, anyway, um, President Trump can save the day. It's hard to calculate the possibility of Albrecht attaining freedom in the near future. Fortunately, President Donald Trump has proven to be dedicated to prison reform, and a number of convicted criminals have seen their sentences commuted or have received pardons from the president. Convincing Donald Trump to grant Albrecht uh, clemency could be the last stop as the U.S. Supreme Court chose not to hear Albrecht's case for appeal until uh, appeal in uh, June 2018. Placing all of one's hope in President Trump could lead to disappointment, however, because the president previously has tweeted his disdain for cryptocurrencies. And I've covered it on the channel before, so I don't feel a need to read the, the tweet there. But we'll we'll see, and you know, not that I have a firm opinion one way or another. There, I mean, if he did something wrong, there should be a penalty. It's it's just, man, I, I must say, it seems pretty harsh. I don't know. I could be wrong. You guys can tell me what you think. It it seems just really uh, quite intense here. And you know, as as it as, as it pertains to um, granting clemency, um, yes, uh, presidents can can pardon. And what you usually see what you do seriously towards the end of um, a, a term when the president um, either has lost a bid for their second or, or for re-election or it's their second term as president and they, as a result, can no longer uh, run. They can't run for another term. Uh, that's when you typically see the, the pardoning type action for president. So even if he was going to do this, I wouldn't be surprised if it doesn't happen for another four or five years or whatever. Because uh, got a got a ways to go anyway uh, for that. Well, it depends on whether or not Trump gets gets reelected, but I'm not getting into that. This is not a political uh, channel whatsoever. This is an XRP centric channel. So, anyway, I think that's the gist of it. That's a good stopping point. But thank you so much for watching. 
I am not a financial advisor. Do not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambeau!